Hey guys, Palstron here. And today let's talk about my Chainbreaker Cyclone. In this case, the cold scaling version. Using big Herald of Ice and Explodey Chest chain explosions to clear the whole screen while having 500% plus movement speed with the help of Berserk. This build uses the Chainbreaker Keystone coupled with six Unwavering Focus Medium Cluster Jewels and the tireless cluster on the passive tree to reduce Cyclone's cost to zero. Since both Unwavering Focus and the tireless cluster do not specify life or mana cost, this works for the rage cost that Chainbreaker forces upon your skills as well, making it so you basically always have full rage and about 90% Berserk uptime. Berserk works so well in this build because Chainbreaker transforms mana regeneration into rage regeneration, allowing us to increase Berserk uptime a lot more than intended. Since Unwavering Focus specifies channeling, this is only applicable for a few skills, but as many of you might have seen already, this interaction was used to great success before on Winter Orb builds. All I did was adapt it to a melee playstyle. Explodey Chest is important since it does a lot more damage than Herald of Ice and just adds another layer of clear on top, making explosions even more consistent. Since we convert 100% of physical damage to cold, Explodey Chest can shatter enemies, activating Herald of Ice, and vice versa. Converting Explodey Chest to cold also means that we can scale it with elemental damage from free sadist large cluster notables. This allows us to simultaneously scale Explodey Mod and Herald of Ice at the same time, resulting in what you're currently seeing on the screen. This build is very expensive and not really budget friendly, but for all budget Cyclone friends out there, a buddy of mine is currently working on an Impale version of the build, which will be less than 50x, and the result so far seems stunning, and uh, it should be out in the next 48 hours as well, so stay tuned. With that being said, let's get into the build portion of the video. All right, so before we get into the items, let's talk about the chain breaker interaction real quick here. Um, so this keystone is pretty damn busted if you know how to use it. Um, as I said in the intro, this is not something I came up with. This has already been done this league, um, but mostly for spellcasters. Um, I wanted to try this for Cyclone because I haven't really seen a successful version of this at all. And um, as for like the interaction here with Unwavering Focus, uh, it only reduces the cost of channeling skills. So this interaction is completely confined to channeling skills. And when I think channeling skills, I immediately, immediately think Cyclone. I only think of uh, Winter Orb in like third or fourth place or whatever. I immediately think about Cyclone. So it was kind of a no-brainer for me to just try this. Um, but yeah, so let's go over the Chainbreaker Keystone. Uh, regenerate free rage per second. Increases and reductions to mana regen rate instead apply to rage regeneration rate. Now, what do the first two lines mean? That means that your base mana regen uh, is now your base rage regen which will be set to three. So for example, uh, the, the second line then means that if you have 100% mana region, for example, that means instead of free rage, it's gonna be six rage per second and so forth, like 200%, nine region per second, and it goes on and on and on. So that's all really to that. And um, the third line, skills cost plus, two, uh, plus three rage. So this is pretty harsh to manage for most builds, but uh, obviously, as I already pointed out, the unwavering focus means that uh, if we stack this six times, we have 90% reduced cost of channeling skills. Uh, together with this cluster, which also gives you reduced cost of skills, we're at over 100, so we're at zero cost. Uh, obviously, this is not really needed. You can also go for a voices and use a seventh medium cluster jewel. But I mean, why would you if you can just take this instead? It's, it's life as well, so who, yeah. You're at 100%, and um, yeah, this just basically what this means is if I activate uh, Berserk here, as you will see, like we're at a 50 rage standing in our hideout, 
so we don't have to hit anything. There's no like, um, you, we're not a berserker and we have to like hit things to get rage. So if I, I push the button here, you will see it goes down a bit, but it goes back up to 50. And now it slowly goes back down. Oh, and we go slowly down. Oh, 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 oh. So I, I timed this. It's around 16-ish seconds that you have the uptime. And now it goes back up, as you can see. And it's really, really fast. And now we can push it again. And while we push it, it goes up again. Since we have so much mana region. And it goes down again. So basically, Berserk has like a, I think, 3-second cooldown. 3-ish second cooldown, yeah. Um, so now it's down again. So now we wait, now we wait, now we wait. It's off cooldown. We press it again. And so on and so forth. So yeah, uh, it's just kind of crazy. So if you see me being big, this is not Headhunter buffs in the intro. I'm not using Headhunter in the intro. This is just a Berserk buff uh, if you're not familiar with it. But yeah, I just wanted to explain this real quickly and uh, why this build is so fast uh, to begin with. All right, so I want to quickly go over why we chose to go cold over just pure fizz or anything else. And that is mostly because of Herald of Ice. Uh, Herald of Ice helps a lot in uh, clearing packs. And since we're Cyclone and we're scaling a lot of AoE already, also since we are Slayer, we're getting 50% AoE that is global, not only AoE, uh, not only melee skills. Um, but yeah, this is the number one reason to go with it. And the cool thing when we are um, converting Fizz to Cold is we can actually go for Explodey mod uh, on chest and convert that. And that adds on top of Herald of Ice. And it can actually chain off of each other since both can freeze if we make it so uh, Herald of Ice can actually crit. Now, obviously, Explodey mod cannot crit, but uh, still the chains get a lot better uh, if you have both. And I, I want to quickly go over Explodey mod in this section here because I've seen some, I don't want to say misinformation, but I looked up how the new, before I made this build, I looked up how the new Explodey mod is because obviously it got nerfed from 100 to 35%. And I saw some very deceptive videos. I don't know if they are scaling any AoE at all in that build, but um, yeah, I've seen some videos that just make it seem like Explodey Mod is completely unusable now. But all that really happened is Explodey Mod went from insane to good. It didn't go from good to bad. It went from absolutely busted to good. And it's just one implicit. It's just one prefix. Like It's not like you have to sacrifice uh, your chest slot or anything it's literally one implicit so uh in this build it's just very very synergistic and it adds a lot i wouldn't say it, it's an, a complete must-have but it sure makes your build a lot better and um yeah there, there's definitely a, a very different vibe if you have it or not like i tried both versions um it's it's way more consistent with the herald of ice explosions i can tell you that uh, now, one thing is also, since we're cold, now we can scale Explodey Mod in a lot of ways. Um, you might see people just throwing on Explodey Mod in a weapon-based builds without really having any idea how to scale it. They just have the 10% of maximum life as physical damage. They don't really scale that at all. They don't have any global physical damage because it's really hard to get. But it's a lot easier to get cold damage. Plus, uh, what we can also do is... Um, get uh, scale it with um, physical damage added as cold damage for, uh, through Taste of Hate, through uh, Amulet, and through Hatred. So there's just a lot more scaling options. And the, when the explosions are not only about corpse destruction, but they also do a ton of damage, you will see way better results while clearing. Uh, so I just wanted to point this out. Um, now, other than that, as I already said, we have better scaling options, so that's why we go cold. Taste of Hate is a complete no-brainer. It also gives us a lot of uh, physical damage reduction. I always forget this when going back to cold build, but things just on the screen are just perma-frozen or chilled or whatever, and they just don't react. So just being cold alone means uh, you have a lot better defenses in that way, and uh, we will go over that in the defense section as well. But yeah, I just wanted to point this out why we're going cold. All right, so let's talk about the Ascendancy. Uh, we chose to go Slayer, and that's for a pretty simple reason, and that is Area of Effect. Now, um, for in my opinion, for Cyclone build to feel good, you need two things. A lot of movement speed, a lot of AoE, and good damage. Now, good damage and a lot of movement speed is already pretty easy through the whole Berserk interaction, but you're still missing AoE. As I said, this build is really, really tight in passive points, 
you can't really go out of a, out of your way to go here or run something fancy like a carcass check or whatever. Um, so this is just a very elegant way to get all your AOE needs uh, um, basically fixed uh, with the 50% ink AOE per enemy kill recently. This also counts for Explody Mod and Herald of Ice, which is super nice. And up top of, on top of that, plus four melee strike range. Cyclone gets 8% ink AOE for every melee strike range you get on top. So this is another 32 on top. The small node has 10%. Uh, just this node alone already, in my opinion, makes Slayer so much better than a lot of the other Ascendancies. But it doesn't stop there. We also get Overleech, which is so comfortable to play with. Um, on top of that, we get 10% reduced damage while leeching, which is always. And uh, we have the crazy Headsman plus Bane of Legends combo for even more movement speed. 20% um, call. Uh, so yeah, in, in my opinion, Slayer is a no-brainer. And you don't really need anything rage-related from Berserker. You're already fine. Most of your rage is only there to be consumed by Berserk anyways. So buffing that wouldn't really make much sense in my opinion. So yeah. Uh, for me, Slayer is the, the definitely the best option. All right, so let's talk about the items here. Uh, first up, the sword is completely ridiculous. I'm not going to deny it. Uh, I got this one, and it was one of the reasons I even wanted to make this build in the first place. Uh, it's really, really nice to have. It's nowhere near uh, needed or anything. All you want on your... It, it doesn't... So here's the thing. It doesn't matter what kind of weapon you get. You can go staves, you can go swords, you can go whatever you want. And the simple reason for that is this build does not really have much space for weapon type kind of damage nodes. So for example, these or like staff X, it, it really does not matter because you are so tight on passive points that you won't really be able to fill it. Swords will give you these nodes, which are nice, but um, staves will give you these nodes. Staves will also give you uh, melee strike range and uh, endurance charges, which is really, really nice. Um, axes will give you something. I would say that the best ones are either swords because of these notes here or staves, um, which will give you these notes here. Uh, if you're staves and you're block, uh, you probably don't want a path here and you can path up here, which we will talk about extensively in the impale version video, which will be out soon, as I said. Um, but that one goes with staves. Uh, it doesn't go to this region and it goes up here for the third cluster jewel and you get free endurance charges and stuff. But overall, it really doesn't matter. Whatever you can afford, uh, high fist DPS is all that matters. Crit, attack speed, you're good to go. Now, as for the gloves, this is where most of your conversion will come from. Um, you might have seen that I'm not really taking these conversion notes here. And that is for the same reason as I already explained. This is, we don't really have much space to work with. We want to have the life notes. We, we don't want to go like 4K life or whatever. Uh, when I have everything on, I'm like at like 5.3k life currently. Um, so we don't want to go even lower. We can't really cut any life notes. These are all very, very premium. So we want to get our conversion from a watcher's eye and from gloves. And so what you can do here is you can buy one with 25% conversion to cold. And then you ice sling veil on the 35% fizz converted to cold. Um, Basically, this, you can do that through a T4 ice sling, but if this is too expensive for you, you can also go for these nodes, but you will have to figure out how to do that. I, I couldn't yet, so I just crafted these gloves. Um, yeah, nothing really else to see here. Now, the chest, uh, as I said, uh, I would go for Explodey Mod. I really, really think it adds a lot to the build. Um, it is, in my opinion, the only required mod on the chest. Uh, I also went for chance to avoid elemental ailments. Now, initially I wanted max life, but since I hit this and it's really, really expensive to recraft the chest, I just went with it and uh, went for uh, these here, which give me elemental avoidance. And then with taste of hate, we're at 100% uh, chance to avoid freeze and chill. And um, the ignite and shock we can fix with um, jewel implicits actually. So like this one here, chance to avoid being ignited. So we would have to get another three or four of these and for shock, another three or four. I'm currently working on that. It's really annoying to get them, but uh, you, would, you would rather have life in the implicit. I just bricked this basically. So I'm going for elemental ailment immunity. Uh, but yeah, uh, we go for additional curse. Now, additional curse is only really important uh, if you have a 
Frostbite Ring and a Assassin's Mark Ring. So this one has an implicit with Frostbite on hit, and this one has Assassin's Mark on hit. Uh, now, if you don't have the Curse mod, you can cut either of them. I would probably rather keep the Frostbite, just because uh, Assassin's Mark only, uh, only works on rare and unique enemies, which doesn't really help you when chaining with Herald of Ice. This will actually increase the damage you deal with Herald of Ice and your Explody mod for better chains. So I would uh, prefer Frostbite over Assassin's Mark if you do not have the plus one additional curse. Um, now, other than that, attack crit, really, really nice. You can force this actually by uh, harvest rerolling crit in your suffixes. Like uh, first you um, awaken or orb together the Explody mod and the uh, you can apply an additional curse in the prefixes. And then once your prefixes are full, what you can do in the suffixes is you craft prefixes cannot be changed. And then you go for a harvest reroll crit and you will hit this one in four times. There's only spell crit and the tech crit and uh, the, two, uh, the two different um, tiers there. So it's actually pretty easy to hit, uh, but this chest is not as hard to craft as you might think from uh, looking at it. Um, now the, the helmet, this is still a work in progress. I didn't really hit anything yet. Uh, I awoken or, uh, awoken or orb together. Nearby enemies have minus 12 cold rest and nearby enemies take additional uh, elemental damage. And then in the prefixes, I'm trying to go for 10% uh, of fizz taken as cold. I haven't really hit it yet. Um, you can hit this by rerolling harvest cold and you have like a one in 4.5 chance or something. I still have to put an ice veil on, like I said, a uh, complete work in progress. Um, now what you can also go for, as you see, we went for an atonement mask. And the reason for that is that our physical reduction comes from taste of hate and this helmet. And it isn't really physical redu uh, reduction. So the crushed mod that lowers your physical damage reduction does not apply to that. And you cannot go negative on physical damage reduction. So there is no downside to this helmet base. So all that it gives us is 25% increased fortify effect. Uh, what you can also do is go even further and instead of the nearby enemies take Ellie damage, go for another fortify mod. So you could go fortify and minus cold, uh, which is a lot better defensively. I just went for this. Uh, boots, as always, uh, we are, since I hit this mod with avoid Ellie ailments, I crafted life here. If you don't have that, you just go for life here and then craft cannot be frozen here. It's basically the same, uh, so it, it really doesn't matter. Um, as for boots, I just had these from my other builds. Go for as much movement speed as you can, as always. Um, yeah, so that's those. Next up, uh, the belt slot. I went for Torrent's Reclamation. Obviously, if you had, have a hand hunter, go ahead. Um, I went for Torrent's Reclamation because, as always, with Slayer, it's really, really nice. Uh, the life recovery rate is awesome. Uh, the increased attack and cast speed, and obviously the Harbinger, which gives you 20% more action speed, um, which makes you even faster on top. So right into the theme of the build. Um, but yeah, so you can also, if you don't want to go for either of these, you can also go for a Leather or Stygian belt and just go for as much life as you can. I would especially recommend that if you're doing a lot of bossing, uh, which this build isn't really made for, but yeah, um, whatever floats your boat. Now, the jewelry is interesting. Like I said, I have plus one additional curse on my chest. If you have that, you want to go for Frostbite plus Assassin's Mark. If you don't, cut the Assassin's Mark before the Frostbite, in my opinion. Now, uh, on jewelry, what you want to look out for is you want one ring with fire lightning damage. Now, um, you might think this only goes for attack, but it, it actually does not specify that. So you can craft this here. It's an Iceling mod. You don't have to hit it with Iceling Slam like I did here. You can just craft it on. Um, but basically what these do is um, they will activate your Sadist here. Now, we don't really have any fire or lightning damage, but just having a little bit already makes it so we can, uh, we can shock and ignite um, so this, this also counts for your Herald, Herald of Ice on top, uh, gives us a little bit more flat damage and obviously it counts for the Cyclone. 
Um, so we'll, we will always have this up because we're always igniting, always shocking, even though we only have a little bit here because um, normal mobs are always going to get the shock and the ignite. So um, that's really important that you have one of those. Other than that, go for as much life as possible. And here's the kicker. The most important mod is the mana region. Now, I'm not really sure what the perfect breakpoint for this build is yet. I probably want to somehow get this LUS elsewhere and go for even more mana region on this. But as for now, I settled for this. Be careful when going for mana region that you are reaching a breakpoint with Chainbreaker. Now, what do I mean by that? This game is very, very static in how it does certain regeneration types. So, for example, on Chainbreaker, 3 rage per second. If I have 33% mana region, that does absolutely nothing. There is no 3.99 mana region. There is only 3 and 4. So I will need to reach 33.3, which is exactly one third, or 34% mana region, and then it gives me one. So be sure that whatever all your mana region adds up to goes over one of these breakpoints, or you're like, you're like kind of missing out on a bit, is what I'm saying. And um, what I have here is just mana region, mana region, mana region implicit. I would want more mana region here, but as I said, it doesn't really work with my resistances right now since I'm running Headhunter uh, or Torrens Reclamation, both which have no resistances. If you run a different belt, you have a lot more freedom on these. Uh, also, you will need one int mod at least. I have 25 int on my chest, and then I have another uh, T2 roll here. Uh, you're very int starved in this build, and you don't really want to take this because, like I said, we're very, very tight on builds. Um, on, on passive notes, and it would mean like re removing life, which is very, very important in this build, uh, since we're kind of starved on that as well. But yeah, that's basically the jewelry. Other than that, nothing really important. Get as much resistance as you can, get as much mana region as you can, uh, get at least one of these fire lightning hybrid mods. You can also craft them on, get a ton of life, and you're good to go. As for the anoint, I went with Brinkmanship down here because it gives us some nice AoE for Cyclone. And um, also some nice AoE for the uh, Herald of Ice and um, Exploding mod on the chest. The 10% ink AoE, if you have stunned recently, also counts for them. But if you do a lot of indoor maps and you don't really need the extra AoE, or you're just satisfied with what you have, um, Discipline and Training is also really, really nice just to get some more uh, life in there. Uh, maybe make it a little bit easier to gear. Um, but yeah, uh, that's pretty much up to you. As for jewels, um, I'm using a Watcher's Eye with a two mod Watcher's Eye with Conversion and Hatred Crit. Um, basically, this gives us the 100. It's 99 right now. I'm, I'm still divining that stuff. Um, but if you don't want to go for this, like I said, you can go this. I just didn't really feel it necessary. I would have been a little bit too squishy if I did that. Um, as for normal jewels, you can go either for full damage and life or you can go for damage, life, resistances, something like that. Um, the thing is, you won't really need resistances on jewels if you have a different belt, so keep that in mind. But the most important mod here is max life. That's the absolute most important mod, followed by any crit multi, followed by attack and cast speed. Uh, sorry, not cast speed, but attack speed. Uh, now, um, resistances, you can play around with it. I wouldn't buy them preemptively with resistances because you don't, as always, you don't really know where you need them. Uh, but yeah, that's basically the jewels. Also, you need a lethal pride. Now, these are really, really cheap. Of course, they cost like 20C right now. Uh, and the thing is, and that's why I have this fancy corruption here, is it doesn't matter really uh, the rolls here. So you don't really have to reroll them and have to look for good mods. Oh, this is melee crit multi. Oh, this is melee crit strike chance. You don't have to look for all of that. It only has to be a Koya for the chain breaker keystone. Everything else doesn't matter. So what I just did is I corrupted a bunch and I got corrupted blood, which is nice, but uh, which is which is a nice, a nice upside. Uh, but yeah, otherwise just get any lethal pride. As for the flask, um, the alchemist quicksilver of adrenaline is pretty self-explanatory. Zoom, zoom. Um, as for the cinder swallow urn, we're actually using this because we have these, this little bit of fire damage here. Every bit of fire damage, as long as your ignite does one damage, it counts as an ignite. So we're always igniting enemies, so uh, they take more damage. Uh, we also get Onslaught, which is really nice. 
and then we recover some life mono energy shield which isn't really that important um and we get 80 percent increased critical strike chance on top really really nice uh damage buff um after that we have taste of hate which is the superstar of the build this gives us a lot of reduction in um, physical damage because it it gives us uh physical damage taken as cold and then on top of that it gives us a 30 percent chance to avoid being chilled and being frozen now this one is really really nice uh if you can actually make it work with the chest here um so you have 30 percent here 45 percent here then 20 percent here and for the last five percent there's a lot of things you can do mostly uh mostly just jewel implicits you can farm with harvest but what i chose to do with uh, with it is go for a megalomaniac with unwavering focus and spike concoction we need unwavering focus but what spike concoction does it gives you flask effect so that is 20 percent increased flask effect which gets this to 36 percent chance to avoid freeze and chill which gets us exactly over the 100 percent hurdle so i'm doing this uh this megalomaniac i mean i, I think this is like a one-off as you know with megalomaniacs you can't really get them uh, otherwise i would just get any jewel implicit so yeah um then uh next up the diamond flask of wording we need curse immunity so diamond flask is gonna do it and um last but not least the azirius flask i chose to go with this because this version doesn't have that much leech actually we only have the 0.4 percent of attack damage leech this life which is very nice and it's probably more than enough but i just wanted to go a little bit further and it also gives us a lot of damage and on top of that we have a lot of chaos rest with this as you can see we are already at pretty decent like minus 22 but uh with this one up we are at positive 20 which makes us really really resistant especially to damage over time uh, now as for as for bleed immunity uh if you do not have any jewel with corrupted blood immunity i would go for a um a off staunching flask so bleed immunity flask but if you have this mod on any jewel you don't really have to go for it in my opinion i haven't ever died to a bleed while leveling to i'm, I'm like a little bit over 98 um and that is simply because we're slayer and we have overleech so you won't even see the bleeds most of the time i think it's a wasted slot here uh, i would rather get the i guess corrupted blood you definitely need something because that is way too much damage to handle for your overleech so i would i would advise get the corrupted blood implicit somewhere and then uh save yourself the um flask suffix for uh bleed immunity in general all right now for the gem setup uh our main links are cyclone i went for a divergent cyclone this is valve uh, it just bricked it doesn't really matter i double corrupted it i got plus one level but also the vol version it, it doesn't really matter i'm not using the vol version at all but it's 21 so it's nice i guess but yeah um this one is divergent so we that basically means we have uh, a little bit more movement speed while cycloning around I, I wouldn't say it's really that important but it's probably the best cyclone version out there you can also go for the normal one um, i have infused channeling we have a lot of channeling uh a, a lot of channeling effect with this here rapid infusion uh, gives us increased effect of infusion what infusion basically does is it, it increases the damage uh, with which our main skill hits which is physical and it also makes it so we take less physical damage so really really nice there uh, definitely a must have now um as for uh as for pulverize now pulverize is the the weakest link here i just put it in because i have uh, fortify uh, corruption uh, but if you don't have the fortify corruption there's two things either you just replace this with a fortify uh, uh support or if your staves you replace one of these cluster jewels with a staff cluster jewel and get overlord which will also give you fortify on hit so if you're staves that's really really easy otherwise just go for fortify support uh, support instead here um awakened melee fizz pretty self-explanatory it gives us intimidate um awakened ellie damage with attacks as always awakened gems are not mandatory and close combat since it's a lot of damage and we're swords now if you are uh if you're anything but swords or axes you can also replace this for example if you're if you're like i don't know your mace or something you can replace this with um fortify support um 
Then next up, uh, we have another six link here. Now this one is completely optional. Um, obviously having a six link in your main setup is nice, but this one is just kind of a weirdish Berserk setup. So we have Berserk here and then we have Enhance, which gives us, this quality here gives us 23% increased attack damage. This gives us another 24%. It's not really that important, uh, but it is nice to have because it also, uh, yeah, it, it is a little bit more damage. Let's just say that. And none of this is really necessary. It's just, I already had the six link. So I didn't want to D six link it to put something else there. So I thought, let's just do something with it. Uh, second wind, this reduces the cooldown of our, uh, of our Berserk, basically making, ha making it have less downtime which is really, really nice. It also works with Divergent Smoke Mine here. Um, now we're using Smoke Mine in this fashion here. What you want to do is you want to put Detonate Mines on left click, and then you have, for example, Smoke Mine on whatever button. I have it on mouse five. So all you do is you just run and then you press it once. Now, usually with mines, you have to press twice because you have to detonate. But if you have your move on left mouse button anyways, you're just moving and it auto casts once you cast your Smoke Mine, which is really, really nice in general. Now you see this buff up there. This gives us even more movement speed. I think it gives us like 30%, yeah. Um, and then it also, and also the quality grants us 22% increased attack at cast speed, which also gets amplified by this enhance here. Uh, the enhance also enhances our blood rage, which is really, really nice. Now we have a anomalous blood rage, which gives us two, normally gives us 2% chance to gain a frenzy charge when you hit a unique enemy. So Usually the downside of Blood Rage is it isn't really up against bosses, basically. This kind of negates that, especially since we're hitting so fast. Um, the Frenzy Charges are always up against bosses. Um, with Enhance, this goes to 4%. Usually it's just 2%, so that's double the chance, which is also why I really like this setup. And um, these five are really nice to have, so if you have a five link, that's cool. This one is not really necessary. I just put it in here because uh, this is an Ancestral Protector. All the quality gives us is more placement speed, which is nice to have, but you don't really need this linked up to anything here. Um, but yeah, I, I use Anomalous and Ancestral Protector for single target damage uh, alongside Frost Bomb here, which is also a single one here. So you can just exchange these. It doesn't matter. They're both basically uh, zero links. So yeah, I use Frost Bomb and uh, Ancestral Protector against bosses. Um, other than that, I have a cast one damage taken set up with both Immortal Call and Anomalous Steel Skin. Uh, Anomalous just makes it so you can take a little bit more damage. Not really that important, uh, but nice to have. Uh, as for our auras, uh, we have now, we have two Enlightened Spore, which is obviously pretty expensive. Uh, all this does is makes us able to get a little bit of a precision in there. As you see, this does almost nothing. It's only level six, but since I had two Enlightened Spore, might as well get it in. Otherwise, this is the least important thing to cut if you, for example, only have Enlightened 2 or Enlightened 3. Um, but yeah, so we have this in here. Hatred, pretty much a no-brainer. Now we're also using Blood and Sand. This actually gives us less area damage, but it does give us more uh, AoE for mapping. And then you can just switch into Blood Stance whenever you're, you're bossing. And uh, it's just a really, really nice feel. Everything that gives more area of effect is obviously really, really good. Um, then uh, at the end, we have our Herald of Ice setup. Now, um, I chose to link this up pretty nicely. Uh, you can see we have uh, Awakened Ink AoE. The only reason this isn't leveled is, as you can see, I, I don't match the int requirements right now. Uh, I might go for something else in the future. Maybe we can level this, but it's fine as is right now. It gives us 10% more area damage, some AoE. It just helps with the chaining the more AoE you have. And then really important is the Ink Crit uh, support, actually. This gives your Herald of Ice base crit, which is very, 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 very valuable. And it being able to crit means that it can freeze other enemies, therefore shattering and therefore chaining and chaining off of itself. Um, so that's basically the reason behind that. But yeah, uh, with the gem, up, uh, the gem setup done, uh, let's jump into the passive tree. We're starting here as a dualist slayer. And um, as you can see, this passive tree is really, really tight. Um, there's not really much to play with. I have like one life node here, but anything else is pretty much set in stone in my opinion, at least. Um, so we're starting here now. The most important thing is getting to all three cluster notables first. So you want to get here, 
here and up here. We do not want to use any voices. So how these kind of builds usually do it is they don't path that much and they just use a voices here, for example, and the voices here, and then just go here or here or whatever. Now, voices are probably the most overrated item in this game. I'm just gonna point it out. Now, the Whispering Ice version of the build kinda has to go for voices just because of pathing issues. You, you cannot realistically sacrifice that much to get to three cluster notables up here. Also because the pathing up here in the int region is a lot harder to do. There's more pathing nodes uh, there's not really much payoff to go for along the way. So you're kind of just wasting points if you're not going for voices. But for this this version here, do not go for voices. I know it sounds really good, but losing out on like 30 pen in total and losing out on what, 180% LE damage, it is not worth it. Uh, just don't do it. Just path here. You need to get here anyways. You want to get here anyways for Valpact, so it's not that far down here. And if you're pathing here, you're getting a lot of payoff along the way. If you're swords, you get this, you get a ton of life, you get crit, you get acro phase acro. Um, so yeah, I would go for three cluster jewels in uh, basically every time. Now, uh, the reason this isn't budget, and we'll go over it again in the budget section, but are, are these large cluster jewels, they're so expensive. They cost like 20X each um, for the large cluster jewels. The small ones are like 1X each, so uh, the medium ones, uh, so they are like okay-ish, but yeah, uh, th that's basically the main reason. You can downgrade basically everything in this build, but those large cluster jewels are really important. Usually with the large cluster jewels, I would just say, don't get, just don't get a third one and just path here, which would mean you would uh, use an extra two passive points. But as I said, this build is so tight that I cannot recommend this build if you can't afford these. So that's basically uh, Sadist, Blanketed Snow and anything else, all the three other ones work. Doriani's Lesson, Widespread Destruction, and I forgot the, uh, the name of the third one, but you get the gist. It doesn't. This one doesn't matter because you don't take it. Um, and then the medium ones are, I chose, so Unwavering fake Focus is a must-have. And as the second note, note, I chose Rapid Infusions. These give us extra movement speed, extra infusion effect, which is really, really nice defensively and offensively. But you can also go for something like Endurance Charge while channeling. There's a note for that. Um, if you're staves, you can go for channeling damage and block, for example. So just play around with that. I just thought that getting this times 5 or times 6 is a lot of movement speed. So I went for this. Other than that, uh, the important notes to path to here are uh, obviously tireless to complete the 100% reduced cost. Um, I put the Chain Breaker in here because it touches more small nodes, giving us a little bit more strength, which is nice to have. Uh, so you can also put it up here, but you might as well go here since it's a little better. There's no real difference. Um, but yeah, just take that keystone here. If you have it up here, just take this keystone, obviously. Uh, other than that, we also want to go to Valpec since we're a Slayer. Really, really nice for uh, recovery. Um, Fangs of the Frost, really, really good in the cold version. Other than that, we're pathing to acrobatics phase acro if you have elusive on your boots that stacks with the with the chance to dodge and chance to spell dodge from here really really nice defensively i really really have grown to love these notes even more during ultimatum league just because um ultimatums really really want you to have some kind of block or um or avoidance in general so that's wh why i pathed here uh first i pathed down here but it looks enticing because it's so li little amount of pathing notes but it's actually better to go here and just fill out these notes because otherwise you would path down here, take the cluster jewel here, and then you path like here and here, which is really unexciting. That's just a little, you get like 200, 300 more life, but you lose out on so much. Like you lose out on acro phase acro, these crit notes, more jewels. Like uh, it's, it's really, really a good way to path. Now, obviously if your staves do not go for this at all, just skip the phase acro acro you could probably uh, skip this whole region together i will go uh, uh, over that in the impale video which will come out soon as i said um but yeah uh, two things i really want to want to uh, address real quickly is first up my megalomaniac here so i went for a megalomaniac with unwavering focus and spike concoction um, megalomaniacs are really really rare so there won't be any like these on the market um 
just replace it with one of these. Uh, this isn't even that much better. You will also get another jewel socket, so more life for you. Uh, I just went with Spike Concoction because it helps me get um, Freeze and Chill immunity with Taste of Hate, a little bit more defensiveness um, with the Flask effect, a little bit more Flask chargers and stuff. But I wouldn't ever say that this is important. Uh, so just go for another one of these. Uh, important is only that you have six unwavering focuses in total. Um, and the second thing that maybe uh, some people might be wondering is why I didn't take Wind Dancer. I'm aware that Wind Dancer is really, really good. The thing is, I want all of these four nodes for the um, avoid elemental ailments. So if I pathed up here, that is plus one point. So I would have to path here and then here. So it's actually two points. Like pathing down here is just more efficient. So is Wind Dancer worth to me if it's two points? Personally, not really. As a Cyclone, you're in the midst of things. So you're going to get hit a lot more than like a bow build or something. Even though we have like evasion and stuff, you're going to get hit from time to time. And if, even if it's only small hits, I, this is not really ever up. And since this isn't really a bosser, I don't know. So if you're, uh, but if you're pathing here anyways, then if you're here, this is like one, two, three points and you want to get here anyways. So then it's fine. If it's a one pointer, I would have taken it as well. But this build is already so tight and so um, basically starved on percentage life nodes that I want to take that I, I couldn't really afford putting another two points into here. Uh, I just wanted to address this one really quickly. So I already alluded to this in the uh, passive tree section of the build, but the main reason this build isn't really budget friendly or this version of the build isn't really budget friendly are these jewels here. They cost me like 20x or something. I don't know what they're at like right now. I, I think I checked earlier, it was like 22x even. Um, these are really annoying to get. You want Sadist plus Blanketed Snow, both are really important, and then any third node. They're really, really wanted because they're used in a lot of builds and they're really hard to craft. Um, so that is, you need three of those. So that's the main reason I'm saying I, I wouldn't advocate for this build uh, for somebody who is on a budget, but um, what I will be doing is in the next 48 hours, I will put out a impale version of the build that we're working on right now. And, uh, we're going to deliver it to you as soon as it's filmed. Now, um, other than that, as for budget, uh, a lot of your budget will go towards the weapon. Um, as good as a we of a weapon as you can in the budget video, we'll have like a 14 X weapon or something. So as you can see, we will, we won't spend more than 50 X. So a lot of our budget will go into a weapon. That's like one of the most important things. You can cut down on a lot of the other stuff and it, the build will still feel really, really good. Uh, other than that, the cold version just has a lot of stuff uh, where it, the damage just scales off of a lot of gear. Like um, minus 12 cold res is really important since we convert from fizz to cold. We now need penetration and lowered resistances and stuff. You don't need that in the fizz version. So uh, there's just a lot more flexibility uh, in the fizz version of the build, in the impaled version. You also uh, do not need fizz added as extra cold. You don't need cold penetration, stuff like that. So yeah, uh, in general, um, that's the reason I wouldn't really call this a budget build, but definitely stay tuned. It will be on my channel. So you can either subscribe, wink, um, or you can just check back in like two days or whatever. Uh, but yeah, I wouldn't give, give up on this build yet. If you're on a budget, uh, trust me, the impale version looks really, really, really nice. Uh, so if you're a, bud uh, if you're a cyclone guy, um, definitely stay tuned. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to point this out so I don't get anybody into this build who maybe can't afford it. I'll end this with a very, very quick, uh, leveling section here. Um, now usually I do leveling sections because a character might be annoying to level up with Cyclone. This is really a no brainer. Uh, I mean, you're in the dualist area, you're Cyclone, you just take whatever damage notes you can get. Uh, you can even path here, take resolute technique, take all the damage notes on the way. Uh, and just respect later. Regrets are so cheap this league, so I would definitely just go with whatever is most comfortable for you. Take all the damage notes. Um, you can even so so when you're Slayer, when you while you're leveling at level 33, immediately get this one. You can level a Cyclone. It's really really smooth. Um, just get some movement speed boots alongside it, so it doesn't feel too bad. Uh, as soon as you have this node, I mean the leveling is just so nice. Cyclone leveling is just. Just really, really awesome. Um, something I will mention is, as always, leveling weapons. Uh, you can just search for high PDPS on the trading website for these, or you can just go with the unique versions. Limp Split is really, really nice. 
cauterizer is really really nice from level 40 on um, or just buy rares uh, blood reaper is really cute um, so yeah uh, early level like screaming eagles uh, also don't forget that there is a replica version of car reward um, which gives you aoe and area damage instead of proc speed and proc damage uh, so this is really really nice for leveling i i wore this amulet up to level 70 or something uh, but yeah other than that also something i want to say is maybe praxis rings are really really cool Cy uh, these reduce the cyclone costs to zero so if you have two of these you can just breeze through the acts not care about mana reserve it all for stuff like I don't know, Pride, because you're probably going to level as um, as Fizz instead of Cold. Uh, cold you're going to do later when you can put on all your gear. Um, so you just go for, I don't know, Pride, Herald of Purity, uh, whatever comes to mind, and just throw Praxis Rings on. It's super quality of life. Um, so yeah, just for a quick leveling section here. Now that's it for the end of the video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe. Uh, as I said already, I'm going to do the Impale version soon. I know uh, that not everybody has as much currency laying around. I get it. Uh, I want to make this viable for uh, at least like 50x or something. The thing about these builds always is if you get to that kind of speed, uh, if it was that easy to gear, everybody would do it. So there is a, com a, a currency commitment here all the time, even in the Impale version. But I want to get it to at least 50x where maybe a lot more people can access it. Um, so yeah. I hope uh, a lot of people start doing this. Uh, I think this will be nerfed maybe uh, at some point because it's kind of broken. Uh, but yeah, if you want to zoom around with a Cyclone build, go with something like this. Stay tuned. I'll, the next video is out in the next 48 hours. Impale version of this. Uh, but yeah, since I still don't have a slogan, see you next time.